Welcome to It Is Written Canada. Falling in love and getting married can be filled with fun. I know that this is the case for the two of us. However, there are also bound to be frustrations or even irritations after a while. Because after all, you are sharing your life with another human being who has his or her own way of negotiating life. Today, we're going to introduce you to three young couples Siri and Nathan Johnson, Abigail and James Cleveland, Kevin and Shannon Corrigan. They are going to share their personal journeys of how they met, fell in love, got married, and now negotiating both the fun and the frustrations of married life. Siri and Nathan, we're going to begin with you. Welcome to It Is Written Canada. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Siri and Nathan, how long did you know each other before you got married? We've known each other almost half our lives. Yeah. We are both students at Fountain View Academy in, L in Lillooet, British Columbia. And um, we knew each other, but we weren't really friends. And it wasn't until we came back a few years later to, um, to work at Fountain View as, as uh, me as a boys dean and her as a girls dean in the dormitories here. Yeah, so we really got to know each other then because we were working on the same projects, you know, going on mission trips together, camping, and that really gave us the time and space to know the, the good things and the bad things and the stressful things and our talents and God's gifts and yeah, so. So yeah, we worked with each other for about eight years um, and got to know each other well before we got married. Yeah. So. I think we knew each other before we got married about 20 years. A little more than 20 mm -hmm. years. Yeah, so it's been a long, <laughs> been a while. My dad worked at Fountain View Academy since I was about six months old, maybe four months old. And so I've spent most of my life here. And then a couple years later, uh, Abigail's family moved to Fountain View. And that's when we met each other, I guess you could say. And we got to know each other from then because yeah, living on a campus that's pretty small, you get to know everybody, so. Yeah, for sure. I think the first time we met was in 2017 when Shannon's family moved here to Fountain View to work here. Um, but then we didn't spend time together probably until the summer before last. Mm -hmm. That's probably when we started hanging out together. Because he was at school, so we didn't, yeah, in the U.S., so we didn't see each other at all until then and then came back and started visiting a bit. Yeah. <laughs> there was less than a year before between when we officially dated and got married, right? A few days over a year. A few days over a year. <laughs> <laughs> so. I saw her um, through the thick and the thin. Um, you know, we went on mission trips together as staff um, with the school. Um, we um, worked on lots of projects together and uh, <clears throat> You know, there's a quote that I've heard by a friend that says, run the race that God has for you. And when you see somebody running next to you, you know that's the one for you. And I saw her running next to me. Knowing if it's the one, I think has been something that I've worried about for a long time. Um, actually, when I was quite little, like when I was probably four or five, I had a pretty massive crush on Abigail <laughs> and I actually, my brother and I had this little fort in the, in the backyard that we would play in and one day I remember I had this little secret notepad of paper that we'd keep stashed in the, in the we had like a hole dug in the ground and it's kind of embarrassing to tell but we, I actually wrote one day, I will marry Abigail someday and I stashed it in that paper and like stuffed it in the dirt. I knew Shannon was the one 
over time, obviously, it wasn't all at once. But I think an important thing for me was before we even started dating, i have been praying about it a lot, and I just wasn't certain. And I just asked God for direct guidance. I felt like I didn't want to get into something that wasn't the right thing. And this quote from Messages to Young People actually came to mind, where it says, if the relationship will help you towards heaven, if it's going to be useful in this life. And I actually went and got the book out and started reading it. And I found it and I was like, okay, I think God's saying move forward with this. He just felt like home to me. You know, he's similar to my dad. We also had spent so much time together. Obviously, you feel comfortable with the person you spent a lot of time with. Like he said, we did projects together. We worked closely together. Um, I think those showed our strengths and our weaknesses. And it just, it just um, made it, yeah, obvious. I, I knew that I wanted to marry her for a while, and I, was, I thought she was really cute, and she was a fun girl, because we did a lot of fun things, our families together. And we she was, a lot. Yeah, we mm-hmm. did. And she was always able to hang with the boys. Like, she was as crazy as her brother and my brother were, so I thought that was cool. There's always those moments you wonder, oh, you know, this doesn't <laughs> seem right, or whatever it is, but I was encouraged I felt like God was leading me to it. And I think the other important thing for me was looking at Shannon and realizing how committed she was spiritually. I knew that God was leading her. And um, I just knew for sure, since God was leading me, I could feel it in my life, that we would know whether it'd be the right thing or not as we went along. So did you know about this five-year-old crush that James had on you, uh, that he had written, I want to marry Abigail Corrigan? I didn't know at the time. I think it kind of trickled through the siblings a little bit later. Um, I think your brother told one of my sisters, and (laughs) she, the story I got is that you said you loved me or something. You wanted to tell me that you loved me or something like that. Anyways, and I was a little (laughs) surprised, but I think in high school, I had a crush on you for a while. I didn't tell you that, but. (laughs) We didn't talk about anything until we were dating. (laughs) Yeah. I wasn't sure if Shannon knew I liked her or not. I think I dropped a few hints, but they weren't that overly obvious. We live in a tight-knit campus here, and I didn't want it to really come back through the back door that I like Shannon, so I wanted to tell her dad directly. Uh, So I went and just said, hey, I like Shannon, and I don't know her that well, but I want to get to know her. I had gone to college in the States, um, and I moved back, and that's kind of when things started. Um, And I worry a lot just in general about everything. So I think I was really worried that I would know if James is the one or not. I think I knew Kevin was the one. Um, a lot of different things, I think. Um, I had a list <laughs> that of things I thought was really important to have um, in someone. You know, stuff was like a must-have, like he must believe the same as I believe and, you know, love Jesus a lot. And just other different things I had, like be active with me and you know just different stuff like that that was really important and when I started getting to know him better and I looked at the list I was like oh yeah he like takes everything. (laughs) I prayed about it a lot and asked God to give me peace in my heart if we should get married and I did I felt like I had perfect peace about it so I was like yep he's definitely the one that's definitely how I knew. And Siri, what is the best part of being married for you? Definitely just having a best friend to do everything with, you know? You don't have to say goodbye to them ever, really. I mean, you go to work, but um, we work together, so. (laughs) (laughs) But just someone to eat with, someone to sit with when you go to an event or sit down at church. Um, Someone to brush your teeth with. (laughs) Someone, you know, when you're busy, they fold the laundry for you. Or someone to get up early and make breakfast for. Um, Yeah, just a best friend. I think it's not having to say goodbye every evening. Um, We hung out a lot in the evenings because you had work during the day um, and I had school during the day. Mm -hmm. So you'd always come over for supper often and then we'd Mm -hmm. hang out in the evening. Um, And we just always hated having to say goodbye and then you had a cold dirt bike ride back to your house. (laughs) That's true. So I think it's just really special just to be able to live together. I just think it's really cool how you can have someone that you like are really dedicated to serving Jesus together. I just feel like being married makes it so much more open because you really see the bad stuff and the things you struggle with and you can work through those things together and just being with your best friend every day. 
like it's best friend but to me being married makes it like a, a new meaning to best friend I don't know it's like way better <laughs> when you get talking with your best friend it's so hard to stop and there's always something to talk about it's nice to just be at home when we're talking and we can talk as late as we want to stay up <laughs> One thing is just being able to live my life with my best friend because we get to see each other so much more often being married. It's just nice to be able to be close physically and mentally and, so, and spiritually and hang out with our friends and things together and yeah, it's just nice to be together more. Um, just somebody to come home to in the evening, somebody who you can share your day with, um, spend time with, um, just somebody who's your best friend, yeah. That is so critical. Um, John Gottman, well-known researcher on marriage, he talks about friendship as being a very key component in making a marriage work. So I want to ask you, how, what kind of things do the two of you do to make it work for you, to keep that fondness, that closeness, and that friendship growing and alive? I think we're fortunate to have a lot of the same hobbies. Mm -hmm. And our hobbies are very practical, things we need to get done. Gardening, we love gardening. Trying to grow in our friendship every day intentionally, I think is very important. For me, I'm busy, I like to work, so I have to actually spend time. So in the morning, I like to do things that are helpful for Shan before I leave the house. I think that's important to her. Like if I remember to make the bed, for example, or try to do the dishes if I have extra time or whatever it is to make her life a little easier. I think one thing that helps us continue to grow our friendship and to get to know each other is just literally doing everything together. Um, so right now we're kind of finishing up building our house that we, that we live in now. It's a project I started a couple years ago. And when I'm working on it, she'll just come out and help me work on it. Um, when we're dating, we do that. And even now, and if I have to go you know, get the boat ready for the summer, like we're out there doing it together because it's together fun. I love to grow all the vegetables. Um, garlic and onions and raspberries and anything we can grow here in our zone. Anything that we can grow and eat. We love processing food. We can tons of um, fruit, uh, pears for pear sauce. We put on our waffles in the fall. Um, but I, what I like to grow that maybe not everyone grows is a lot of cut flowers, of cut flower garden. So dahlias and um, yeah, all all of the flowers. So the more the merrier, we try to do a farmer's market and um, bless a lot of people with our bouquets. You know, I wouldn't say that flowers is necessarily my passion. Um, I know. But, <laughs> but, uh, but making Siri happy is, you know? Oh, wow. And I enjoy farming. Um, and so to help her with that, I really enjoy it. I couldn't do the garden like I do without him. You know what I mean? So every day when I'm out there gardening, I'm singing his praises <laughs> because I'm like, <laughs> if I had to dig this trench like I did before um, by hand, there's no way I could have as much as I have now. Um, so it just, by doing our projects together, it just makes us appreciate each other more, really. Mm -hmm. We like to do a lot of things together, as many things as possible, uh, working out as often as we can. Mm -hmm. um, we try to work together so if we can both do the dishes together and then both do the laundry together instead of one doing the laundry and one doing the dishes, that's more time spent with each other. Same with work. I'll try to help her if she's behind on the cooking on a day and she'll try to help me if I need help. Um, say PE grades, for example, it takes me forever. I'm a PE teacher and doing that takes me forever and she'll enter the numbers on the computer while I tell her what they're supposed to be or whatever it is. So just trying to be together as often as possible. I think helps a lot because we tend to communicate a lot better that way, a lot more often at least. And you love dirt biking? I do. And I she just... does too. Oh, that's what I wanted yeah. to know. I like okay. to ride rather than his bike <laughs> rather than letting my She likes own. to ride behind <laughs> me, but I'm convincing her to learn to yes. ride. She's pretty good now, so we're working on it. It's fine. My dad, for most of his career, was a was the music director here at Fountain View. And so music has been a big part of my life, and Abigail's too. She grew up singing and playing the violin and piano too, so we, that's one thing that brings us together as well. Um, a common interest. Yeah, a common sure. interest, and mm -hmm. now it's a common career, because we both work to make the music continue here at Fountain View. Uh, 
when we do projects together, um, especially with being working at a school. Um, Sari's in charge of decorating for events and stuff like that. And so she'll come up with the idea for it and then I'll help her make that idea. Um, so, you know, in that aspect where, you know, like she was mentioning with gardening, um, she has the, the big picture and then I help it come together. Um, I like to do the mechanical stuff and get out in the field and do it. And she does more like, you know, let's come up with a cool name for it or let's package it this way. You know, if we have to do some recording in the evenings together, I'll have her come help me because she's my best sound engineer. So that's, that's the way I think that we continue to mm -hmm. trust each other more is because I think I know her thought process better than I would just some other co-worker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it also brings its own challenges of knowing, you know, we're working now and then when you go home, we're at home to now. Leave it's, work. it's hard to mm -hmm. leave work too, especially when you're both involved in it. So, because <laughs> we could be doing work all evening, just if we look at our emails, I mean, there's, you, you, I think you can understand how it's, that's, that brings its own challenges. Challenge, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. But you know I think it's work, work. don't you? Because <laughs> yeah. we work together too. So we also have to, but I understand what you're yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. Like when you come home, work has to, stay yeah. at the b building or at the office yeah. right so no emails because otherwise it could go on never all night, you yeah. know especially for us now exactly. because we don't have children at home anymore sure. and you don't have children yet yeah. so you know so you can get so wrapped up in it yeah. mm -hmm. how important is laughter in your marriage it's it's very important I think. Um, but I think what gives us the ability to have that laughter and that joy is having a general sense of happiness. Mm -hmm. So if I myself am willing to do what it takes to make our marriage just generally happy, it, it makes it easy for the laughter to flow out. I think if I was not laughing, I think I would notice it after a while, like that something was <laughs> off in my heart because, I mean, I think laughter is just maybe me releasing some of my stupidity out. <laughs> For me, I don't know, like having fun together is really important. You know, it's good to be able to like have serious conversations and like be serious together about stuff. But I think it's fun. It's good when we can just laugh together and laugh at the silly mistakes we make. And, you know, I think laughing is a big part of having fun. You know, I, I, you know, I try to pick up on what the other person enjoys, right? So I know that she enjoys, um, you know, having a clean house. And so yeah. we try to strive to have that because, you know, when there's, the house is a clutter, it can be stressful for her, right? Everything else falls apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and then, and then we're able to have that happiness and that laughter comes out naturally, right? I think we all have a bit of a front <laughs> and the closer you get to someone, the more you realize that sometimes. And it's just, it's good to know who the other person is and actually experience um, close moments together. And laughing is just one of those things that happens when you're yeah. being casual and just being with the other person. So how similar is your sense of humor? I don't think it's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I laugh because I think you laughing at something is funny and I don't know how you find it so funny. And do you have the same sense of humor? I don't think entirely, although I definitely, if Shannon's trying to be funny on purpose, I definitely end up laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you different in your sense of humor? Or is it the same? It's, it's, it's definitely different. But as we, um, well, even dating, but even more in our marriage, it's been kind of merging, you know? Um, it's, it's cool how it has been, but yeah, it's been kind of merging. I used to be stressed about that before we were dating. Like, is our humor enough the same? Are we gonna laugh enough? Because that is really important. Mm -hmm. But um, now that we're married, it's just so much easier. When you're dating, you're trying to figure out, do I really want to marry this person? Like, is this for sure God's will? You know, you're, you're a little stressed on some of those things. But now that we're married, like all of those questions are, you know, we decided and now we just flow and it's so much fun. One area of challenge that many couples face is resentments. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like a pebble that gets in your shoe and it's very annoying to begin with. But if those resentments grow, 
then it becomes painful. I mean, we are different from each other, but how do we keep them from overwhelming us and, and removing that love that you once had for each other? We, early on, established the fact that if things aren't how we expect them to be, we'll talk, we'll talk about yeah. it. When mm -hmm. we were dating, we would talk about all sorts of things. Like it was, I think talking about things that were, you know, maybe something that in my mind I was like concerned about or, you know, like I was unsure about. Mm -hmm. Uh, at first it's like, okay, I'm not sure this is kind of awkward, but once you talk about it, it's not awkward. Like that's, then, then I had the answer to my question or I had the, the background to her, the way she um, thought about related. something, yeah, mm -hmm. or related to some things. I think communicating has been very important for us. It's easy, at least for the two of us, to tell the other person, oh, you know, thanks so much, that was so sweet of you, that was so nice. But to tell the other person, hey, when you do such and such, I find it kind of annoying, or, you know, um, why did you work out in the morning without me? Like, I wanted to work out with you this evening. <laughs> you know, communicating negative things in a way that's not too emotional, but allows the other person to know you weren't impressed is very helpful, because then we can talk about them. There's definitely communication that needs to happen in there. Um, but I think it's also um, what some people call like the crazy cycle, where I don't love her because she doesn't show me respect. She doesn't show me respect because I don't love her. And so it's just continuous cycle. And so when you get in that, that's how I think that pebble can get worse and worse and worse. But when you look at it, what can I do to make her happy? What can she do to respect me? Um, that changes it, right? And so if you're focused on the other person and not self, mm -hmm. I think that's the best, the best way. Everybody does things in a different way. Like mm -hmm. the way I clean the bathroom might bother <laughs> Abigail, but if she doesn't tell me that, I'm gonna keep doing it the same way. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I mean, it's just a dumb example, but um, yeah, talking about things before they become a problem. It's just important to be able to talk about positive and negative things. And especially when you talk about negative things, not to have an emotional fuss that keeps you from actually communicating about them. Um, I, know I, I know I find that helpful for me. We've gotten better for sure as mm -hmm. over the last six months at saying negative things in a way that we can actually talk about them uh, mm -hmm. so we can get past those things. There's the other side of it too, knowing what things are pebbles and what things aren't pebbles too. Because there's some things that like I might just not do the same way but is that going to be a pebble like sometimes you have to just decide am i going to say something about that or am i just going to let that not even bother me so let's take the cleaning the bathroom example <laughs> okay. so say say abigail likes you to clean the bathroom a certain way could she if she were to say to you james uh, i really don't like it when you do it this way uh is there a better way of her approaching do you do you think <laughs> Maybe not. I mean, for me, she's just going to have to tell me. <laughs> it might be like, are you kidding me at first? Because it's like, this is how all bathrooms are cleaned forever, all men. But if it doesn't cause me any damage. Like, I can, I can change. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the sake of the example, I could change how I clean the bathroom. It doesn't bother me. It's not a deal. It's just a thing. Like, it's just a, a conversation before. Yeah. I, it goes back to that pebble and the shoe thing. It's like, right. I haven't developed a... A blister yet it's just mm -hmm. oh i noticed it <laughs> yeah i'm gonna deal with it yeah so not getting into that area of contempt where you're putting the other person down mm -hmm. but you're saying this is how i feel mm -hmm. and how do you feel about it having those difficult conversations not an easy thing to do i also think to overcome that gridlock is to share your dreams with each mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. you know and if you have a dream Nathan will want to fill it like you, absolutely, let's do that. And I think if we share dreams and not keep our dreams secret from each other, and mm. this is where the communication comes in, like you mentioned, mm. Nathan, mm -hmm. you need to communicate and, and share dreams and help each other, you know, to fulfill those dreams. And I know that's something that we, we realized, right? And we talked about, we're like, we need to work on communication. Mm -hmm. And so we have been striving because we realized that that was a weak point. And so we have been working in that area and we have seen huge improvements. You know, it's just every month, every day, it's just, we love each other more and more. 
I want to ask you about your dreams, uh, individually your dreams, but your dreams for your future, for your marriage. Yeah, I think something that we've talked about that we would really like, um, we both enjoy, like I have my own farm um, and she has the flower business. We would like to have some kind of small business um, that reaches out to the community um, and to those around. Um, I feel like, you know, you can reach a lot of people through, um, through lots of different ministries, um, through door-to-door -door work and stuff, but I feel like one way that we reach people um, easily is one-on-one -on -one conversations, people who we work with. Um, so that's kind of something that we would like to have a business that's focused on, you know, farming business, or whatever, but that's focused on the people in the community and reaching out to them. And plus, you know, we like to live in the country, so. We were both raised in the country and we don't think we can do it any other way, no. so. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come to the end of our time on this episode together. And I just want to thank you for being so vulnerable and for sharing and for actually encouraging others through your example of how to love your marriage. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you have told us in your word that you are love and that it is not good for man, for a woman to be alone. And so you have created marriage and uh, you have shown us how through these three wonderful couples, these young couples, uh, how you are making them happy and through them that uh, you want to, to tell the world, to tell all those who are watching and encourage them within their marriages that they can have the same kind of happiness through a commitment to you and trusting you to lead them day by day. We thank you for hearing us and for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those three young couples, Sari and Nathan, Abigail and James, and Kevin and Shannon have honestly shared how they're negotiating both the fun and the frustrations of married life. And it's obvious that they really do love being married. So the title of our free offer for you is How to Love Your Marriage. If you are looking for meaningful solutions, How to Love Your Marriage offers biblical answers and practical tips for improving your marriage. Learn how to reclaim intimacy with your spouse and 10 ways to renew your marital happiness. Before you go, we would like to invite you to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also listen to our podcasts. And if you go to our website, you can see our latest programs. Friends, we want you to experience the truth that is found in the words of Jesus when he said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God.